folks. Welcome to my weekly recap for the week ending August 4th, 2017. So it was a pretty slow week for me. I watched a lot of stuff that was a little bit out of my price range early in the week. And on Thursday, I took a trade on Fitbit. They had gapped up after earnings a little bit. You see they we're down here around five bucks, and then they gapped up to 575-ish. And then after the market opened on Thursday, they ran up some more. I didn't see most of this move. It popped up on one of my scanners when I think it was probably around the 560-ish area. I don't remember exactly what time, but I did watch it make this double top here at 575, and I thought, okay, that's good for a breakout play. Or an ascending triangle if uh, you're familiar with those so basically what you're looking for is when you know you've got a level of resistance here and it's also making ascending higher lows that's an ascending triangle right and what that means is the bulls are making some progress and I think the statistics are like 65% of the time it will move in the direction of the trend so I was a little concerned because A, it had, had made a pretty substantial move here. It's not a huge move, but 530 to you know 575, that's about 10% of the stock price. So to me, that's a pretty significant move. And also it was pretty extended over uh, VWAP and 9 EMA. So I was pretty quick to just take a scalp. That's really what I was looking for. So I thought, okay, if this thing breaks out over 575, then, and there's you know good volume, then I'll probably just scalp a dime or so, something like that. My account balance is down around five, I think it was at like 515, 520-ish or something. So if I took a loss, it was going to take me out of the price range to use margin. As I've stated in some of my other videos on SureTrader, you've got to have at least 500 bucks in your account to use margin. So on a five to $6 stock, you get around $500, you can do 500 shares. So you only need to make three cents to take a flat trade, which is pretty safe. So I put a limit order in for 576 once it kind of made this little move here. And I noticed that volume wasn't decreasing at least. And I got filled and then I just watched the level two in the tape to make sure that it wasn't going to make a reversal. And I actually got out right at the top. So it got up to 585 and I sold at 584. So eight cents, quick 40 bucks. And I was done. It, uh, it it didn't run out of gas. Made it a little bit higher. I got to 590, and I think that was it for the day. Yeah. So 590 was as high as it went. So I didn't feel bad. I, again, I had made a pretty substantial piece of the move, but I just figured I could capture a few more cents, and I did that. So I was happy with that. Gave me a few a few more dollars, so a little more padding to maybe take on some more risk on a trade next week. Now someone had asked earlier in the week if I could show how I make a low float scanner and that's actually one of the watch lists that I have up pretty much every morning I, I use that one and then I have one that's gainers at the open but they basically display the same thing so in thinkorswim you're just gonna go to your scan tab and then these are the filters that you want to set up I just have it set to look for the value of the stock between one and thirty dollars and you can adjust this to whatever is within your tolerance I typically like to trade stocks that are between a buck and, and ten bucks personally then you want to look for the volume now this is where the float comes in so I have mine set up to twenty million and at least three hundred thousand now if you don't know what float is float is basically just the number of shares available to the public to trade so a stock like Apple or Bank of America or AT&T that have hundreds of millions or, or billions of shares available to trade are not going to be low float stocks. Low float is typically going to be between 10 and 20 million shares available as a cap. So I, I use 20 million because I want to get a little more out of the scan. And then you can set a, a minimum or maximum percent change if you want. I don't have anything in there because I, I want to be able to see both high and low. So 
I'm going to go ahead and run the scan. And this is everything from Friday, basically. These were the biggest gainers for the day. And then you can see the volume over here. Or let's say you want to look for moves that were going the other direction and you want to look for, for plays to short, you can also do this. Now, the advantage of trading low float stocks is the moves are more volatile. So you're going to get these big, huge changes. You know, like EFII, for example, it shit the bed on Friday. All right, you see it was at around $47 end of day Thursday, and it opened at 28 bucks. So that's huge for a stock like that. Now, I don't know if this is, yeah, see, only 18 million shares traded. So it's still in that low float category for my scans. Now, if you were to cap it uh, 10 million here, then you wouldn't see something like that. Again, you kind of want to play around with these values to find your tolerance and find stocks you're looking for. You know, maybe you want to play stuff that's super low float and a little less liquidity. That's up to you. I like to make sure that the stock has a lot of liquidity so I can get in and get out, right? The last thing you want is to get on to a stock that's got no liquidity. All right, so SQNS. Let's check that one out. So when I see a stock that looks like this on the one minute chart, right, you see that it's real choppy, the volume is garbage. I mean, you've actually got some time periods where not a single share exchanged hands. That's not a stock I want to trade. There's no liquidity. Now, I know it's the weekend, but look at the bid and ask here. You've got a $2 spread on this stock. So let's say that you, you know, let's say you saw this move happening and you didn't know any better, right? So you're watching, you're watching this stock and you start to see this and you're like, oh, this looks good for, for a play. Let me, let me play the momentum here because you don't watch volume, and you get in on the ask. Well, in this case, there's no bid. You're, you're not going to get out of this stock. So you're going to get left holding the bag if this thing makes a move in the other direction. So, again, you want to always make sure the stock is liquid when you're looking at low float stuff. And I always sort it by percent change. I typically look for plays that are moving up. And a lot of this will show you stuff that has just gapped up. So you want to take a look at the stock. And you want to look at news. It's earnings season. There could be analyst ratings that come out, you know, upgrades, downgrades that move the stock. And sometimes that stuff's crap. So you got to make sure that what you're trading is not just a reverse split, for example. You see a lot of these where the stock jumps up big time. And all they did was, was change the number of shares. Some people will trade that action, but if you aren't careful, you'll get, you'll get left holding the bag. So again, that's a pretty easy way just to make a, a low flow scan. I use it almost every morning. I look for the movers. And then I have this little, these little color-coded boxes over here for this watch list that is just a TTM squeeze indicator that I've added. There's another guy on YouTube that made this. This channel is Han Tech, H-A-H-N-T-E-C-H, I think. And I just throw that in there. I look for stocks that are trending to the upside on the squeeze. So I just look for these light blue boxes. Just a little visual indicator on there. Not, not something you have to do. That's not part of the scan. These are the parameters for the scan you want. Again, the, the big thing here is the volume of the stock. Your max 10 to 20 million shares. And then I like to have a minimum to get more liquid stocks to show up. And again, you can play around with these and get it to be what you want. And then once you save it, all you need to do is you just save it as whatever you want, and then you can create a watch list based off of your scan. So you don't always have to be going back to your scan tab to look for stocks. So you can, like I do, I just have my charts open. So there's the stocks that I want to watch in the morning, and then I have this watch list down here, and then I can link it to these charts. So let's say I wanted to see Kara, see what that's doing. I can pull that up real quick or, you know, whatever it is. And then I can see if that's something real quickly that I want to trade by using a watch list. So that was it for me. Like I said, kind of a slow week. I didn't do much trading. I don't make a lot of trades because the setups that I'm looking for aren't always present. If you force a trade, you can lose money. And that, to me, that's, that's not the right attitude. If the setup doesn't show itself, then you just don't make the trade. So find your balance. Sit on your hands when you need to. 
preserve your capital so that when an, an opportunity does present itself that you like and that you're comfortable playing, you can capitalize on that. All right, thanks guys. See you on the next one. Yeah, I like to keep it mellow. I smoke and keep it mellow. I drink and keep it mellow.